Hey, it's Coach Endor here with Tactical Hive, and in today's video, guys, we're going to be going over the Iraq invasion. It's been 20 years, and uh, we were both in the military back then. Yeah. This guy was literally invading a country, and I was in boot camp learning how to fold my underwear. But which, which we're not going to talk about. Okay. Iraq invasion, up next. Stay tuned. Hey, today's video is brought to us by CCW Safe. They're a self-protection legal provider. In this day and age, you're gonna want something for that second fight in your post-incident. Yeah, dude, someone's coming after your wallet. So even if you've got the cleanest shoot in the world, um, you need to have somebody in your pocket. And CCW Safe, they'll send you out experts that have done this before mm -hmm. to walk you through the process, not just you know cut you a check and tell you good luck. So check them out in the description box below, and it might be the best decision you make. All right, guys, so we are back, and it was my pleasure and honor to be able to bring this content to you guys. This uh, was a pretty big deal, probably the biggest undertaking of GWAT, a lot of moving parts, and uh, this guy was literally at the tip of the spear. So let's get into it. Yeah. Coach, baby. Well, hey, um, so I mean to start with, yeah, this is the first big motion stuff. We've been training for years. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Afghanistan was not a full-on invasion, really. I mean, it was a brush fire war, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know against a, a little, uh, you know, what do you call them? You know, terrorist organization. Yeah. And, the know, Taliban are basically they, military equivalent to an Indian tribe. Yeah. Maybe we'll get into that more later. They folded, but right like, a, folded like a cheap lawn chair, right? Yeah. But um, well, yeah. we're, we're looking at this. It's like this is a, you know, a, a no, no kidding mm -hmm. state, you know, with a fairly high tech and a lot of money um, and a lot of, you know, the tech they buy from other people. But, you know, it would still kill you. Um, so we're we're prepped to that, and uh, and one of the biggest things that we were looking at was the uh, the WMD threat. That was mm -hmm. our, our our main mission. Um, now leading up to this, um, I got back from Afghanistan in uh, October ish of uh, 2002, mm -hmm. and I'd been dinged up pretty good. So uh, I was on the mend from that when we heard that you know hey this Iraq thing's going to happen and Gold Team's going to go. Um, uh, Gold Squadron was not part of, uh, well, we were late to the show in Afghanistan, so they want to make sure we got our, our piece of the, uh, of the Iraq gig. Yeah, so, uh, got to spread that experience around. And yep, there it was. So they let us know, and I was scheduled for surgery, and I went in and I said, Nap, what can you do? My shoulder was all dinged up, and I was recovering from a, uh, uh, well, it was all happening the same, you know, uh, instance, but uh, I cut a big meatball out of my leg and my shoulder wouldn't go over, you know, we got to right about here and would just stop. Mm -hmm. So the PTs shot me with some uh, whatever magic juice and all yeah. of a sudden it worked. So they gave me that shot then and then they gave me another one right as we went out the door in, uh, in February to make sure it, was, uh, it would stay good. Uh, downrange, but you only get two of those, and then you got to get cut. So I knew I was going to come back from Iraq and, uh, mm -hmm. and get my shoulder surgery because it'd be clicking by then. And but yeah. I wasn't about to miss this. Yeah, it was like no, holy crap! Not. No, I'm not. I'm not going under the knife and and be recovering and watch it on TV. You know, we wanted to be there, uh, like every good frog man. Like you wanted to be there, even yeah. though you had no idea what the hell was going on. No, I was in. I graduated from boot camp in October of 2002. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you don't go to surgery. You just get the uh, you get it tuned up a little bit. You know. You yeah. kind of learn that in buds. You know. Like you don't want to get rolled. You don't want to miss major blocks yeah. of training because you're just going to prolong your stay. And that kind of follows you through your career. You just want to be good enough to get the job done. But so anyway, you stay at the team. You're gonna go. Like how? long the the invasion started officially in march like when did you guys know that it was happening for sure uh well i mean you don't believe anything until mm -hmm. you're there but when we're sitting in you know all camped and ready to go in uh saudi arabia 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I said, yeah, um, tomorrow night, watch for the cruise missiles because right. they're going to be coming right over the top. Then you knew. It was like, okay, we're, so we're, we're prepped. You were told nothing in Virginia Beach? Oh, no. I mean, like I said, mm-hmm. as soon as we got back from Afghanistan, okay. they're like, hey, this Iraq thing looks like it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You guys get ready. So all of a sudden, the training becomes a lot more mission focused. We started doing, we did a joint hit with uh, uh, Delta on uh, uh, WMD, you know, mock WMD facilities, uh, full mop gear, ground for the whole, you know, everything. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that was the, was what we were, you know, prepping for. So we had to prep. We knew that that was going to be our mission, but you don't ever believe that, you know, mm-hmm. it's going to happen until until you're there in the sand. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, it just, it helps your sanity because, you know, you get uh, the, the the rumor mill starts running wild. Hell, we're going tonight. We're going out. Uh, you know, don't go. You chase your tail a lot. So from mm-hmm. where I was, I'm just, it was just a nug, you know, just, yeah. you know. Now, in the States, like the train up, how long did that take? Like all of the preparation from the time you guys got back, from the time you got cleared by medical, and yeah. you guys were preparing for this OIR, be no or, excuse me, OIF. Yeah, OIF. Yeah, yeah. excuse me. Yeah, we, this OI, what became the OIF initial? November to January. Okay. Because in, in February we uh, we rolled over there and mm-hmm. we got into the camp and, uh, you know, you got to build up, you know, the guys show up, they put up the tents and all that and they you roll in a little few mm-hmm. days later, populate the tents, kind of make them livable, and then uh, we stood by for uh, for the show. Okay, and so the blue side, which ended up being your squadron, mm-hmm. your primary number one focus was going to be the WMD piece. Yeah, initially it was WMD because that was that okay. was the the big scary thing, and yeah. uh, and. I mean, we, we had been doing a lot of work with it for a long time, mm-hmm. uh, you know, running around mop gear. And it kind of makes sense because, as you know, SEALs were divers, so we're used to sucking and blowing on, you know, uh, on rigs. So, you yeah. know, whereas, the, you know, the, the Army guys, you know, yeah. they have the other issues that they, they deal with. But uh, so uh, because we have that, uh, that you know, um, experience, you know, of using that kind of equipment, you know, underwater, it, it, I think it translated a little bit better than, uh, um, you know, than what the army had. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we got that mission. Plus, I don't think, I don't think Delta really wanted that mission. Mm-hmm. Nobody you know, wants no, that nobody mission. Nobody wants. Yeah, we didn't really want it, but right. you know, hey, we took it, and uh, that honestly, because we had that, um, Delta went out and they were, you know, working the desert and 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 you know hunting mm-hmm. scuds like they had done in the first Gulf War, and. Uh, every place that we were going to hit was in some sort of town or built up structure. So we, uh, we got pretty much all the urban initially, um, okay. you know, as things rolled on. Did, uh, did you or anybody from your, your team, the squadron, were they involved at, once you guys got to Saudi Arabia, were they directly involved in like the AFO piece of prepping before? Uh, I'm not really going to get into that. I mean, there was a okay. lot of there was a lot of stuff going on, and there was some guys uh, that had been at the command before that had moved on to other, mm-hmm. you know, companies, agencies, shall we call them? Um, and so they were part of the the intel gathering stuff. Right. Okay. And we had a lot of intel stuff going on as well. Okay. You know, there was all kinds of, well, well, bad intel, good intel. It's all it's all your best guess. Hunches, you know, yeah, you know, <laughs> erring on the side of caution. <laughs> Like yeah. that is a building, and it could have that stuff in it. So it, we're going. Yeah, there's <laughs> indicators, you know, that people are looking at. Oh, yeah, they, this looks like this, and this looks like this. So okay. yeah, we think they're they're cooking, you know, bugs and gas in there. So uh, we you okay. Know, go but on a, but but as far as you could tell, your tasking was the actual nuts and bolts of getting yeah. there. We weren't the fine fix. We were the finish. Okay, okay. so it, we left it up to other other. Uh, Agencies, shall we mm-hmm. say, to to find it and go. Oh, yeah, that's where we think it is. This is why, and you know, it's going to be there this night. And you go. Everything we did it was at night initially, um, just because there was we we're crossing so much countryside um, at the time. So you got you know the the third ID and all the you know the the ground forces were coming up from the south, and we were up in way northern Saudi Arabia. So we were flying for hours and hours, 
sometimes refueling in the air to mm -hmm. you know to get to these places. So way behind enemy lines and in you know deep in bad guy country. So that was our you know the the risk that we were taking was 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 that it was just you know had things gone bad, mm -hmm. it had been days before anybody would have been able to you know uh, get us out. There was no cavalry coming, you know not not on the ground anyway. So you guys were in. Saudi for the better part of a month? Um, yeah, at least a few weeks, two, three weeks, something like that. I don't know, it's been a, it's been a, f a hot minute, so I, I don't remember exact time. Okay, but, yeah, but know, it's been... At least a few weeks waiting for the, uh, be prior to the, the invasion. Okay. And then once the invasion started, um, uh, our TF-160 guys went out that night and hit some outposts along the border. Uh, and then the second night we started you know, up and we started moving right. and, uh, and striking uh, deep into uh And so for that initial territory. push in, that first movement, you guys did have some delays with uh, sandstorms and oh, things yeah. like that. Yeah, that would come up, you know. You just hide in your tents and... Yeah, a couple of days. I mean, we didn't air have was any... red. <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> real severe ones, but yeah, if you can't see, you can't fly. So Okay, and know, I know there were we some delays with that. That, that was earlier on, but mm -hmm. I think the, the biggest sandstorm we had there uh, mm -hmm. was, was prior to the invasion. Uh, but, so critical nodes, which are um, valuable pieces of terrain, you know, in World War II it was all about bridges, mm -hmm. and then obviously in the Pacific it was all about specific islands with uh, like airfields. But in mm -hmm. every war there's critical nodes, there's critical spots that need to be taken, and soft are the guys that generally go in and do that. But for your guys' piece, the deck of card, you know, yeah. 52 HVTs and the critical nose really wasn't what you were focused in on. You guys were just the dedicated Ghostbusters going in for the WMD package. Yeah, that was that was our main focus okay. going in. Um, right. and, and we hit, I don't know, a, a number of places on, you know. Several, a few, nights. a handful. Yeah. You know, you I'm know. Not, not really getting yeah, yeah, it's okay. going that much, but uh, yeah. As far as... Uh, you know, these target packages, specific locations, like before you guys even crossed the border, you probably had a list of specific buildings of interest, targets of interest that had maybe were supposedly gonna be part of the WMD Oh yeah, we, had, we had ISR like crazy. You okay. know, we had pictures, we had maps, we had everything was set up for you. Um, you know, the, the best Intel package you can think of mm -hmm. was already built because it had been building for a long time. Um, Problem was, it was just somebody's best guess that that would be there. Mm -hmm. So every place that we hit was dry. <laughs> yeah. was, obviously, you know, we Thank didn't find anything. God. But, yeah. <laughs> um, we did learn, though, that uh, you want to win the lead fight first. Because mm -hmm. um, initially, one of the first ones that we hit, and I was, uh, I was on the outside crew, so I wasn't mopped up. Uh, but the guys that were going, you know, slated to go inside the facility were mopped up from the time they got off the helicopter and we got the shit shot out of us. Yeah. So yeah, Huge there was, disadvantage. Um, yeah, there, there was a, a big disadvantage on the, uh, on, um, on that. You're basically wearing scuba gear. You're basically wearing a dry suit. You wish it was scuba gear. Yeah, yeah it like was, it's, yeah. it's bad. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not fun. Huge disadvantage. But you know, it, it'll keep you alive, so mm -hmm. that's what you do. So we all had the, the mop gear on. We just had the, uh, uh, our uh, gas mask was just off, you know, okay? So when it came time to bust into the facility, then you would prep and then go. So, you know, win the lead fight first and then worry about bugs and gas. Okay. So, you know, if there's humans running around living, you can probably breathe the air, all right? Once you get inside, uh, you know, it's not like there's a big tank with a bunch of, you know, you know crap leaking out of it. There's usually admin spaces, so we'd go in there, mm -hmm. that's what you'd prep, and then you'd, you'd bust into the, uh, the dirty areas and, uh, you know, and that's how we had trained, um, but yeah, yeah. You throw some lead in the air, and um, it, it changes a few uh, of your uh, uh, TTPs. Right? Yeah, priorities change. <laughs> Just a tad. So this will definitely kill me. The other one, yeah. off chance it's even there. All righty, so the invasion kicks off. You guys are held slightly in reserve for your specific mission, the bugs and gas. Yep. But it didn't take very long for you guys to actually get over there. How'd that go? Well, yeah, we, we did our, our hits from, from Saudi across the border, mm -hmm. and then when it was time, I guess uh, the third ID guys had, had made it through to uh, Baghdad International Airport that was 
previously Saddam International Airport. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, they cleared the area, and we'd been hearing stuff about you know aircraft coming and going. I'm like, okay, we're gonna move in into there. They, they gave us that. So one you know evening, they said, all right, pack up all the stuff that you're gonna need to you know work out of for two weeks. So a couple of loadouts of uh, ammo, you know, all your gear, your sleeping gear, you know, everything else. And you put it in one big backpack. And then the C-130 pulled up and we just, you, what you do, you walk in, you put your backpack down, turn around, sit down on it. You've got all your operating kit on, fully load gun, everything. Um, and then the guy behind you put his backpack down on your feet and turned around and sat down on his backpack, okay? Uh, I happened to line up right where, about where the wheel wells were. I'm thinking, oh, this is pretty good because that's a little more extra you know, protection from yeah. the bullets that we figured were gonna be flying at us. Um, and in the back we had, uh, well, just a bunch of gear and stuff. Uh, so we take off and we fly. As soon as we're, we get off the ground, about well, 10 minutes into the, the journey, the turbulence started, and dude, I mean, turbulence on a, on a you know a commercial aircraft. Mm -hmm. I was like, I sleep through it now because mm -hmm. I, I know what those airplanes yeah, can do. They're seatbelts. Yeah. There's even a little oh, right. little light indicator thing saying, "Hey, <laughs> wear that. Yeah. Wear it." <laughs> no, we, we didn't sleep. That. There wasn't any place to even put your your heel yeah. tether on. So we were bouncing around, you know, weightless a little bit, and then bashing around, and and this went on for, Jesus half hour 45 minutes uh, just uh, continuous yeah. and at one point the guy was sitting in front of me he leaned back and he yells hey coach do you think you're shooting at us and i look back at him I'm like does it matter because <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway uh and then about you know two minutes out from landing it was nice and soft and smooth and we just rolled right in landed there in the uh and you know middle of the night on the airport um and got out and rolled over to, uh, we're directed over to this big hangar, and that's where we started setting up. The next morning, the third ID guys came over, their sergeant major or whatever, and uh, he's like, hey, when'd you guys get here? And I said, last night. He goes, that was you? Ballsy move. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> was it? <laughs> yeah, uh, and there were holes in the airplanes later on. They, uh, they we were told they, they had to patch a bunch of holes in the wings and stuff that, you know, from the, the rounds that we'd taken. But Ground. apparently, there hadn't been airplanes coming and going mm -hmm. all this time. We were, I was on the first fixed wing aircraft to land at Baghdad International Airport. So that's, that's how that went and that started yeah. us off. Um, first official flight at the newly christened. <laughs> yeah. No longer Saddam. <laughs> we don't use the S word around here no more. Nope. Unless you're looking for him. We're all and good. Can. Yep. So then we uh, uh, we were ushered over with this big. Uh, you wake up. You know, we went to sleep that night, uh, hearing the bombs go off in the uh, in, in the greater Baghdad area, mm -hmm. um, and then woke up in the morning. And this uh, hangar that we're in looked like Swiss cheese, man. It just had all kinds of just, uh, you know, that and all the, the pigeon crap from all the birds that were living in the rafters. And we just kind of set out and got, you know, we raided cots and stuff from uh, the surrounding area, other buildings, and we kind of made the place a little bit livable. Um, liberated. Yeah. Repurposed. L liberated some things, yeah. Um, There's no well, stealing anymore. <laughs> no, well, I steal it. I didn't take it even home. Yeah. Yeah, I left yeah. it right there, you yeah. know? Uh, handed that off. Um, no, they, uh, uh, we, we set things up while the head shed kind of got their bearings and, you know, started getting intel. And then we started uh, to rolling on, on a, we did a few more WMD hits in the city, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, Sometimes we go daylight, night. It didn't matter at that point. Um, you know, we did. We weren't running uh, big armored Humvees. We were in uh, lightly armored or n unarmored vehicles, uh, and just you know, rolling through traffic, pointing guns at people, and they'd move out of the way. And you know, we could get where we were going uh, pretty easy. Um, and so we did a couple more dry holes uh, for WMD. And then uh, we started uh, the, the HVT mission, which you guys might have you know, heard about the, the deck of cards, the, you know, the 
52 guys that Ron, Donald Rumsfeld was like, no, these are the guys who put their faces on the mm -hmm. on the cards. I think Saddam was the ace of spades or a joker or whatever the hell. He was the ace of spades. Yeah. Believe. Though he uh, was a bit of a joker. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so we, uh, <laughs> ta -da. yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we started doing that and the, the H, HVT, the high value target, um, so the mm -hmm. first one that, that they hit us with was uh, Spiker. Um, mm -hmm. And he, he was an airman, or uh, a pilot, that had been shot down in the first Gulf War and he was unaccounted for. And they figured, they got some intel that there was a, an American being held someplace. I think it was Abu Ghraib prison. I don't know, it was a prison around Baghdad. And so we went and hit that, um, took it down with uh, you know a bunch of Rangers. Um, and obviously another dry hole, you know, we mm -hmm. didn't, they, they found his body, you know, uh, I think years later, you know, out in the desert where the Bedouins had buried him. But, you know, what it was, a, it was a job to go do. So you're getting out into town, um, you start to do, I guess, more conventional, unconventional type missions. The WMD stuff is we were fading. Set, yeah, we, we were you're switching gears. How are you guys getting around? You, you, you're so, okay, land, so, you're gaffing, you're trucking. You, once we got there, um, and more airplanes started coming in. We got more of our gear, so it wasn't just mm -hmm. the stuff we packed in our uh, in our backpacks. And they moved in 99 Rangers and TF-160, and their little birds uh, were all in this hangar. So it was us on on one little corner, and then you know the the planning area over here, and 99 Rangers and uh, and all the TF-160 little birds and uh, mm -hmm. and those guys and some you know got ISUs and whatever just. Uh, hanging out, and that's how we were staged. So um, a lot of times we'd uh, either uh, roll out on our Humvees or the Army would show up with uh, uh, the old M113s and Bradley fighting vehicles, and, uh, and we'd roll out uh, in those. And that's, that's how we did the Abu Ghraib hit was, uh, was I was in a Bradley. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was nice, I was like, hey, this is kinda cool. Surprisingly <laughs> cramped on the inside. Yeah. Like yeah. You get in it, you're just like, you're like, hmm, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's like an optical illusion. That stupid ramp is like so slow. You're just like, eh, you're like, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, you know? <laughs> the, uh, the M113s were a little more nimble, I found, but yeah. uh, but you know, you, you know, they weren't stopping much for uh, in in the yeah, way they, of, yeah. of ordnance. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we 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 did that one. Um, we got a, a, a hit um, on the. Um, Oh, so one of the, the, the hits that we did was on the, uh, the Hunt Club, which was the bath party, like, country club, right, mm -hmm. downtown. So we roll down there, we roll in, and, of course, it's empty, and we're like, you know, we search the whole place, we look around, we're just kind of, at this point, we're getting kind of pissed off, because, you know, all these dry holes, and it's like, come on, let's, let's, let's find something, let's do this. So, you know, you, you might bash some things up, and... And right there in the, in, in the front, there was this big wooden desk, and behind it was a bunch of these uh, like little library, you know, dude, whatever, the, the catalog, was this like, catalog. Was this like the front desk? Yeah, like a front desk. The reception big area? Big front desk, big nice wood, I'm like, yeah. oh, you know, I like that kind of stuff, like, wow, that's nice wood. Mm -hmm. um, Anyway, so I look back there and there's this, you know, it's all these, uh, these drawers, right? The card catalog, right? And so I pull it out, and just as we were gonna start just chucking it all over the place because we're pissed off, the Intel guy, he steps up and he's like, hang on a second. And he pulls up one of those cards and he gets out his cell phone and he dials it up and he's like, Abdul? And he's like, yeah. He's like, okay. And we had everybody, you know, forget that freaking 52 cards. Mm -hmm. We had everybody who was anybody in the bath party. We had their name, their address, and their phone number all in there. So we just packed all that stuff out and, uh, and you know, turned it over to... Uh, people who could do stuff with it. So that would start making things hopefully a little bit easier to, mm -hmm. to, to grab people. So around this time, in those first few weeks of the invasion, you know, a lot of chaos, the government had completely collapsed and all the public works were shut off. The military was disbanded, law enforcement, everything. I mean, they just they shut off the Iraqi government. So a lot of chaos, a lot of craziness. Um, was it hard to get around, like in the major areas, the uh, cities? So when you went at night, there was mm -hmm. nobody on the road. Mm -hmm. So that was easy enough. And usually when we rolled out at night, we were in uh, 
uh, something armored. But you know, we'd go in, in Humvees because I mean, at that point, um, you know, they hadn't figured out how to do the the roadside bombs yet, mm -hmm. and all that our stuff hadn't really evolved. Um, yeah, so we would just roll, and during the day, you know, on Humvees, like I said, just, you know, you point your gun at people. You don't have to speak the language. Everybody speaks, you know. Yeah. Hey. Works everywhere. Yeah. You know? Everywhere. Yeah. Even places that, but they do speak your language, yeah. they still speak that. Yep. It's yep. universal. And everybody loves America when yeah. you point a gun at them. Yeah. You know, right then, hey, USA, great, this, yeah, no problem. Um, you know, so there's little little tricks you you learn as you go along, but uh, mm -hmm. you know we got kind of used to it. Um, we would roll through, and people knew to get out of our way, and you start you know learning your way around. Uh, we would stage at the uh, those big uh, the parade ground, where those mm -hmm. big uh, the cross swords. Yep, were. right there in the center of town. Yeah, so that's we'd we'd roll out there and meet whoever we were going to uh, mm -hmm. you know meet with. That would be our staging area. And then we would go and, uh, and and do hits. Was the was it called the Green Zone by that point? Good God, no! No, because that kind of peninsula on the yeah. Tigris or whatever became later it, on. Later, later on, on, somebody just okay. drew a line and said, "Okay, this is going to be the Green Zone." But that kind of DC head of government, where Saddam's palaces and stuff were, that was taken right off the bat, and then that was yeah. kind of HQs. Or, or I don't the, know. I don't did know. you go to that area? Did you work? Yeah, we were in and out of that area all the time. Did you stage there? Like, did you eat there? No, there was nothing. Everything to eat. was by up. Everything was by up. Okay. I mean, if we once we left the wire at by up, it was like you you brought it and then you brought it back. There was no, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, your, your experience with it later on um, when you know the, the big army rolled in and, and started you know working with the the populace. That was way different. We were like we didn't trust anybody. We didn't mm -hmm. you know, I. There was looting going on that was like crazy. These people, you'd see guys, you know, tying up, you know, trying to get as many goats as they could because they were pulling them out of here. Uh, you know, guys pushing refrigerators, you know, down the road. I'm like, dude, there's no electricity. What the hell are you going to do with that thing? It was just some weird stuff. You know, just stuff happened. They were mm -hmm. just like, you know, everything's got to go fire sale. And uh, yeah. they were grabbing everything left and right. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so once you guys ditched your CBR gear and kind of the, the Ghostbuster suits and packs yeah. and all that stuff. And we never really ditched it. We always mm -hmm. had, had a gas mask on you. Okay. At least the gas mask, just because mm -hmm. even if you weren't going to get in there and planning on getting dirty, if you did run into something, you want to be able to, you know, yeah, at least get your uh, your gas mask on. Uh, and I were think your decon stations only a biop? Did you have those set up, pre-set up? No, no, they, they were set up in a, like a rolling mm -hmm. kit, you know, so. It's an ISU. Yeah, well, yeah, we'd have it set up so that you could load it on a, on a you know, they, and that was all for if you were planning on going to get dirty. Mm -hmm. um, once we were in the city, we are figuring, okay, it's probably not going to happen, but we rolled with the kit at least close by. So, because you have to set those things up. You can't just, you know, have it set up, back it by up, drive back there, and then, you know, get your, you want to do it as close to the target as you can and still be safe. So you set those things up, you know, with the wind and all that, you know, there was a certain way of setting it up to do it. So you had to roll with the kit and we don't, we would have it in a helicopter that would come, you know, come to us. Did you have people that were assigned to set it up for you? Oh yeah. All yeah. that stuff? Yeah, we had specialists. We had, we had good tech, you know, okay. good techs that would, uh, yeah. that were there to uh, take that. Yeah, I, uh, I trained for that mission and we went through all the stuff and then they had the, You'd call them in and they'd try to do it. I didn't ever made sense to me if you were just on a target that you would do it there. You'd probably foot patrol or try to get somewhere. Yeah. You, so you, what you want to do is get off the X mm -hmm. and still be out someplace. So we would always have a place out in the desert that was designated. Before, if, again, if you're planning on getting dirty, you mm -hmm. would go to that spot, get clean, and then come home. And that was somewhere you know, away, so you weren't gonna run into that stuff. Cause okay. I mean, you know, if it was just simple stuff like, uh, you know, chlorine gas, mustard gas, anthrax, things like that, that you have to inhale, mm -hmm. that's one thing. Um, but your exotics, uh, you know, where you just get some on your skin mm -hmm. and it'll lock you up. Uh, All done. All yeah. done. All right. All right, so you guys were able to uh, shift gears. Now, as far as your assault loadout for doing, you know, the not WMD stuff, did it change much during that time or did you pretty much have what you needed when you got there? 
pretty much rolling uh, the the gear that we had. Uh, you had three or four mags across your chest, mm -hmm. uh, and then two on the gun. Um, with the pistol, trying to get a bit lighter, we had the, the, the 226. Mm -hmm. So they gave us these 20 round magazines that we could shove in, and you had one 20 round magazine was going to be uh, would be okay. You wouldn't need you know uh, uh, spare mags unless you wanted to bring them. Because mm -hmm. I had that, and then a lot of times I had a shotgun on me as well. So, you know, you, you got to weigh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, weigh Ounce what you're- pounds. What you're bringing with you and, and, and the, the chances that you'd need it. Um, and then there was always, you know, in the vehicles, we had, uh, you know, more magazines, mm -hmm. more ammo, more water. So you weren't always having to carry it around with you. You'd have something there if you, if you needed it. What percentage of the time were you halfing and gaffing? So ground assault force trucks, helo assault yeah. force helicopters. It was once we got into Baghdad, it was mostly it was mostly ground. Um, you know, if we during the day, you know, sometimes you got to do a hit during the day because that's when the guy's home, mm -hmm. and the fastest way to get there was in a helicopter. So a couple times we were flying daylight missions on. Uh, you know, on the little birds, uh, and then we had 60s it would it would come in as well if we needed them. Um, but yeah, that that was uh, you know, it was fun. You know, we didn't take a lot of you know, well, not you don't really know you're getting shot at when you're just riding on the outside of a helicopter. Mm -hmm. You know, unless you know it hit something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It makes a distinct sound. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you, a you're not hearing your anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's noisy. Yeah, you know, riding on the outside of a helicopter. It's a little noisy, so uh, yeah. Um, so if we had a, a long distance to go, then it would be uh, helicopters normally, mm -hmm. um, and then or we do a combined half gaff. So you know, some guys would be riding on the uh, uh, the helo, and some guys would uh, you know get on the the ground assault force, which would normally stage someplace fairly close by, and then we do the initial hit, and then they'd come in. Mm -hmm. Okay, that the was one, the one two. Yeah, so you, you always want to you know hit with uh, you know violence of action, surprise, um, and then bring in your your heavy guns uh, later. If you they'll see you coming from a mile away if you roll up with with everything all at once. Mm -hmm. So you guys are rolling with the Mitch two thousand one half shells, mm -hmm. PVS fifteens. Yep, and Pec twos. Pec twos and lasers all over the place because you know nobody could see them but us. Mm -hmm. You know, um, IR chem lights, IR lights, everything you did at night, you're trying to keep his uh, aim point, signatures comp M2s, yep. bead night suppressors, yep. the uh, CQBR, which became the Mark 18 motto. Yeah, at the time I had mine set up, uh, you know, we, we didn't use any fancy term. No, no, no. Your 10 no. Inch it was called a 10 inch. <laughs> it's called a 10 inch. Yeah. Nobody. To this day, as far as I know, nobody yeah. calls it a Mark 18. That's a Fleet Navy thing. Yeah, you get your 10 inch and you get your 14 inch. And because I was a Grenadier as well, um, I just had two guns. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have the, 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 the shorty that would put on my lower. Uh, I just had two guns. Because when you put a 203 on a, on a, um, a barrel, it shifts your point of impact. So mm -hmm. I think mine shifted like, nine inches low and four inches to the left at 200 yards. So I was like, okay, sight it in, leave it on, and then just, you know, use another, you know, make another gun. You're better off. Right on. Then uh, we've had, we've seen your, uh, that, you had the M MLCS uh, play carrier. Yep. Were you running the, the chicken play carrier the whole time, or did you do that converted uh, Rhodesian with the spine plate? Uh, I pretty much, once we got there, I was doing that chicken plate all the time. It was okay. convenient, as, you know, and like then, you basically had your, uh, your comms, and, comms and, uh, and mags on your chest, some water in the backpack. You want to keep that thing kind of light uh, mm -hmm. and thin if you could, especially if you're riding in vehicles, because mm -hmm. helicopters, you got a little more room, but man, yeah, you get terrible. jammed into a, a Humvee. And for the size of those things, they're tiny inside. They are. It's yeah. crazy. It's insane. And I'm like, I'm not a small guy, but I'm not a big guy either. Yeah. And you work with these, some of these just dudes who are just monsters, and they've got all this gear, and you're like, how are you getting in and out of that thing? Like, oh, man. Let me start. We just talked. Yeah. We were talking about with the Bradleys and the M117, or the 
the yeah. APCs, like they look huge. Yeah. And then you get inside, inside, you're just like, what? Yeah. But but yeah, no, it's okay. It's part of the part of the job. So those, right on. Those were running with. Were you guys uh, detaining a lot of people? Were there a lot of people on target that didn't necessarily need to be? A lot of the targets that we hit, um, there was yeah. I mean, you get whoever the HVT was, mm -hmm. and maybe bring in you know his family members or whoever was in the room with him. But mm -hmm. I mean, some of these guys were in fairly large places. You had servants, and you know, mm -hmm. just you know, just a lot of. There's a lot of ancillary, you know, non-combat people. So, I mean, we were the right guys for the job because, you know, other branches might just go in and, you know, get a little more trigger happy. And we had been training for the hostage rescue mission for, you know, the, the six years prior to that that I'd been at the team. It was all hostage rescue. That was our main focus, just hostage rescue all the time. So we were really, it was drilled into you you know, you don't want to shoot anybody that didn't need to be shot, even if mm -hmm. it was, you know, excusable in the moment. But, uh, yeah, so we were real, real careful about, uh, about our uh, uh, fire discipline. And, yeah, it worked out for us. Right on. How, uh, so how long total were you in country before they rotated you out? A uh, couple of months. I mean, we, we didn't do a full uh, deployment in there. Uh, we rolled in, in there at the beginning of the year. Um, I think by uh, May, I think we were we we're out of there. That's pretty good. I mean, it's four and change. Yeah, I think yeah, it's like I said, it's been a while. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and we were just rolling. We just wanted more work. You know, it was like mm -hmm. yeah, there was uh, initially yeah, we, we kicked their ass. You know, and they had rolled over, and now it was like okay. Um, you know, it was, it was before the nation building stuff had started, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of had to deal with the, you know, the PSD and all that yes. crap that, uh, that they gave us. Um, but yeah, right then it was like, no, we, we, we took it over and now we're plucking, you know, we got a lot of low hanging fruit. We, uh, didn't get any, uh, any of the big guys that came a little bit later. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, you know, we're in, out and then, uh. Of course, when I got back from, from there, I had to go under the knife and uh, get mm -hmm. my shoulder fixed and all that. So, you know, it was a good uh, little final hurrah for me. Right on. Yeah, it's a, it a pretty significant final hurrah, the biggest, craziest thing. You know, I didn't get there till the end of 05, so everybody was in their patterns. You know, things had stabilized significantly, but... I mean, you talk to people that were there in the beginning and it was just, you know, as you guys can see in the pictures, you know, you're living on cots, you're living on ground pads, you're eating MREs if you're lucky. Yeah, um, we, had, uh, we had MREs pretty much as much as you wanted. They'd mm -hmm. drop pallets of uh, MREs so you'd get to, you know, pick and you know, mm -hmm. do a lot of gourmet cooking. Uh, mm. The Rangers, Rangers, boy, you, 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 you want to find somebody who can make mm -hmm. a gourmet meal out of MREs. Go find yourself a ranger. Cause yeah, they have cookbooks. Yeah, it's insane. Literally, uh, they have like little pamphlets that they issue out. I got one in Buds <laughs> yeah. of like how to mix and match the different yeah. flavors and stuff. It's pretty nuts. Speaking yeah. of rangers. Yeah, the, the Tillman brothers yeah. were, were both assigned to us. Um, so they were on a number of, uh, of the ops that we had, but they were, uh, you know, held in reserve. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Pat and his brother used to come over and... Uh, and hang out and drink coffee with us because you know we were a little older and mm -hmm. you know they were surrounded by a bunch of uh, first enlistment types, <laughs> young rangers, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the the conversation was uh, a little more oh mature over on our side of the tent. And uh, I didn't know who the guy was. I'm not a football guy, but uh, a bunch of the guys did. And you know they were he he was a cool guy. You know, nice guy. His brother was cool. And um, you know they were uh, by the time we were leaving, they were kind of you know, pissed off that they hadn't gotten more, uh, more action, mm -hmm. you know, but you know, you're being in the, in the reserve for us, you know. It's amazing. It's something that everybody wishes for and wants and then you get it and you're like, well, okay, <laughs> I guess we're doing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you know, nothing really bad. We didn't lose a single guy mm -hmm. while we were over there, you know, um, you know, every time we flew in a helicopter, pretty much came back with holes in it. 
you know, because people were shooting at you, especially at night. I think we got more holes in us at night than, uh, mm -hmm. than during the day for whatever reason. Um, and we had a couple of really close calls with, uh, you know, anti-air type stuff early on. Mm -hmm. um, any, uh, any close calls with blue on blue? No, no. I mean, we had drilled that down pretty good. Um, you know, all the uh, all the targets that we had that had been built up by uh, uh, you know other agency target package. Hey, look at this. There's WMD. They were all dry or it was crap. Or the, the intel was mm -hmm. you know where a wall was supposed to be ten feet high. It was actually four feet high. Well, I can jump over that. I can't get over the ten foot high wall. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're just looking at you know the picture from straight up and down. That's what you get. One of the cleanest ops, the best ops that we did was, uh, you know, towards the end there. And it was, they called us in and with a Sharpie on the wall of the, the office. Because then, you know, they just drew a big, okay, this is what it looks like, blah, blah, blah. You're, this is this road, this is that road. You're going to pull in here, we'll do this, boom, boom. And then we got hopped in the vehicles and left. And it was clean. So, you know, by that time you get in that, that, that role, you know what, where people are going to do mm -hmm. and, you know, or what people are going to do and where they're going to go. And, the groove. Yeah, in that groove. And, it, you know, it was smooth after that. And, you know, the, 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 the fresher your intel, I guess, was, was the better, you know. Because, yeah, the guy was home. All right. All right. He didn't have a chance to, to get some wind. And Did you ever get him at dinner time? Take off. No, no, never got anybody at dinner time. It was oh, normally man. in the evening when we, we figured they were, they were sleeping. We'd hit them at dinner time. Well, they had curfews and stuff for us, so just they, we'd try to hit them at dinner time because they'd have dinner guests over so they could conspire. And, dude, we always ate their food. Just <laughs> <laughs> Kebabs and marmalades oh, and like, man, the fresh they, vegetables. We weren't thinking about that. Dude, we, we, weren't th we, we were thinking about food because they already yeah, suck. Yeah. But dude, we always ate their food. Yeah. We don't care. We're just like drive, get back to the driver. Bring the driver. Like, hey, go down. <laughs> oh man, we always did. This is how we did. I don't know if anybody else did, but yeah. we're no. always so hungry. Yeah, we were we were, we were hungry as well. Had we yeah. thought about it, we, we, hey man, let's hit him at dinner time. That would have been great, but we weren't thinking about it. Pay the mama, like, because you know she's not going anywhere. Like, just like give her, like here. I'm sorry. It's like don't even make eye contact. Like I'm ashamed, but I'm hungry. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty much uh, you know the wave tops of my. Uh, my, right my spring 2003. Spring fling. Yeah. Of 03. Spring break. A little, yeah, a little spring break action. It wasn't there. a break, but you broke a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it still oh, yeah. works. We broke a lot. A lot of stuff. You're going to yeah. break some shit. I mean, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to anyway. break some stuff, definitely. Well, yeah, thank you so much for being here. You know, it's, I can't believe it's been 20 years. I was actually in Chicago when this was all going down. I just would go up there for the weekends with my friends. You know, Great Lakes is just up you know, train right away. And we got there and there was like all these protests and all this crazy stuff was happening and I couldn't believe it. It was just surreal. <sighs> a surreal time, kind of a transition of this is the new reality. And, but you had to be there, you know? You had to be there, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was, yeah, like I said, we had a real good deployment. We didn't lose anybody mm -hmm. that time. So uh, yeah, and, you know, we just, you know, rolled around, you know, kicking ass and breaking things. It was right all on. good. Cool. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, you know, I hope you enjoyed the video. I just wanted you guys to be able to hear this firsthand. Um, there hasn't been anything like it since. Honestly, this was a, a major invasion to a major country that had a pretty significant way to fight back. And, I mean, it was clean. And it went by the numbers. And, um, you know, WMD mission was a top, top, top priority. And, uh, you know, we saw it through. It ended up being what it was, but damn it, it was a good experience nonetheless. So thanks for being here, man. Yeah, glad I could be here. And I, as always, guys, if you like this content, like, subscribe, yeah, you know what to do. All right, guys, this is uh, Coach and Door, out. <laughs>